good to have you back, Divya. Hey, welcome everybody once again. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you are, wherever you are in the world. It's uh, wonderful to connect with you all. It's such an awesome privilege uh, just to uh, share. Uh, so in this course, we are going to be uh, studying, learning together about praise and worship. Uh, the course code is BC105. Um, it's awesome. Everybody is doing OK. Everybody is doing all right. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. OK. All right, can I uh, request uh, Titus, do, would you mind uh, starting us off with a word of prayer, please? Yes, yes, Pastor. Yes. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you, Lord, for reuniting us again to hear your word, to equip ourselves with the word of living God. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us as a family. We are here to be molded, we are here to be equipped by your word. Strengthen us by your word. Deliver us by your word, as it is said in Bible. We shall know the truth and truth shall set us free. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful session that we are going to have today. And specially speak to us through your uh, servant, Pastor Roshan. We are real to your word. Speak to us. And we give this whole session, whole day into your hands. Speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Titus. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get started. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. I'm excited to go on this beautiful journey, uh, you know, for the next couple of months or so, three months or so, uh, just learning uh, about praise and worship. Um, I've been teaching on the subject for a while, uh, but I never get bored of this. I never get bored of it and not tired of it, uh, you know, sharing about it, learning about it uh, so much more. Uh, and, uh, I can, after all these years, I can honestly say that I still haven't arrived uh, to a place where I can say I know everything about praise and worship. And I don't want to come to that place where I can, well, I can say I know everything about a place and worship. I want to always be in the position, the place of continuous learning, right? Um, so that's why I'm super excited about it, right? And so today we're going to start off with the first chapter. Um, and if I hope you uh, you all have downloaded the course notes everybody yeah from the classwork tab and i've also shared on the stream section um just in case if you uh, missed out on that okay um so just to quickly go uh, to go over the course objective right in this course is designed to teach us the principles of praise and worship as revealed in the word of god Okay, topics dealt will include what praise is, what worship is, the purpose of congregational worship, having a lifestyle of worship, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you look at the table of contents, um, we have ten chapters in all, so it's fairly very small. Um, so we start off with uh, the introduction by defining praise and worship what that is. And then we look at the Hebrew words for praise and worship. Uh, why we want, you know, why do we have to learn about the Hebrew words for it? We will look at that and the foundations of praise, the power of praise. Uh, and then we go deeper and deeper into what is worship, uh, becoming a worshiper, and then learning how to enter the presence of this beautiful almighty God. Um, and then learning a little bit about personal worship and corporate worship um, and moving prophetically in praise and worship and then living a lifestyle of worship. Okay, so, um, so we, there's, there's a lot of theological aspects to it as well as practical aspects uh, to this course. Yeah, is that cool? All right, so, um, and uh, I've also mentioned some uh, wonderful books uh, for you all to read, if you can get your hands on that, uh, you know, recommended reading, uh, reading without reading, Divya. Uh, <laughs> see if you can use that superpower here. Uh, Exploring Worship, uh, Worship His Majesty by Jack Hayford. 
praise and worship by Rod Parsley, Lift Him Up, The Unquenchable Worship of Face Down. Uh, these are all brilliant, brilliant books on the topic, on the subject of praise and worship. So, um, yeah, if you are able to, you know, buy it, download, uh, you know, get your hands on those books, go for it. And uh, are you guys not able to hear me well? It's, it's fine, right? Okay. It's, uh, Okay. Ebenezer, uh, could you please uh, check uh, your systems uh, volume levels, please? Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, responding. Okay. So just coming back uh, to page one, um, so, uh, please get your hands on some of those books. At least one of those books is going to have a huge impact on the subject of praise and worship. All right, um, so let's dive right in. Chapter one, introduction, defining praise and worship. Now, I've started all my classes, every time I've taught on praise and worship, and I've seen so many of them do ask this question. And so I'm gonna ask the question again, okay? What is the question? What, according to you, in your words, does worship mean to you? Feel free to unmute the mic. Uh, I mean, raise your hand so that we can go in order. Otherwise, it'll sound like we are talking in tongues. Uh, so what does worship, I'm not, okay, so here's the thing. Before you all start off, let me say this. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer. Okay, so don't hold back thinking, oh, what will this person think? What will sir think? Oh, this is not the, I don't care. Okay, what does worship mean to you? Let me know. Good morning, sir. Hi, Avdesh, yes, go for it. Yeah, worship, uh... Uh, uh, first worship did by the son of Adam and Eve, uh, and uh, and other uh, worship uh, did by Abraham when uh, he he was going with his son on the mountain. So uh, I think uh, worship is uh, something uh, uh, something giving by man, uh, uh, something giving to the lord uh, by the uh, people that is uh, like thanking uh, and it is uh, uh, this is worship okay. all right thanks thank you yeah. all right uh, we see subashish right i'm right subashish this is adoration confession thanksgiving and supplication nice okay thank you Alice says, expressing our love back to God. All right. Rebecca says, thank giving to the Lord and lift, lift up high to Lord Jesus. Yeah. Sacrificing our bodies as living and holy sacrifice. Yeah. Giving glory that the Lord deserves. Yeah. Worship is a way of confession and thanksgiving uh, to the Father with the flow of music. Okay. All right. Worship is a lifestyle, giving glory and honor to God that is due to him, expressed through our lives. Okay, Jafina, yeah, go for it. I see you, you raised your hand. Yes. Um, I believe worship is something that builds a very strong relationship with God because I worship every time, like whenever I walk or whatever I do in home. So it's something that builds our relationship, and uh, I really love to worship. Thank you. It's awesome. Okay, thanks for sharing that, Jacqueline. All right. Divya says, worship is a lifestyle, giving glory and honor to God that is due to him, expressed through our lives. Any act showing a given individual that is higher than you, he, she, is a source of your life. Okay, worship is a lifestyle. Uh, worship is praising God for who he is. <clears throat> Expressing love, respect, and honor to Lord because he deserves all our respect. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I all of y'all are. Uh, you, you've passed the final exam. Okay, you don't have to sit through this course. Okay, we can end uh, this course right now. Okay. <laughs> you 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 all have figured it out so <laughs> amazing amazing it's it seems like my job is very easy it's going to be very easy <laughs> right yeah uh thanks guys thank you thank you all for sharing uh you know your thoughts and what it is uh, what worship means to you all um <clears throat> another question for us okay uh has there been a point in your life, I'm sure there's been um, many moments, many circumstances, uh, many times in your life where you would worship, uh, you know, in this context, uh, the aspect of singing or just praying, uh, whatever it is. Uh, if, is. Has there been one moment in your life uh, where, you, where you felt low and you worship uh, and, and you saw breakthrough happen? I did not understand, sir. So, has there been time, Vish, uh, in your life where you, you know, you felt really low? Uh, uh, you're not having a very good day, but then uh, you chose to worship, uh, and you know, and you saw Jesus coming through. Uh, you know, there was a breakthrough. Um, has there been days like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, does anybody like to share one of those moments? Can I share? Sure. Yeah, um, to tell you something that happened recently is joining in this Bible college. Because I've been searching for a Bible college for a long time. And since I was a girl, there wasn't much support in family. So I heard a song called Whatever Your Plan Is. And for... Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I was singing that song because I had no hope. Well, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where is my college. and I don't know anything about this. And after the night, uh, I met this college on, uh, through someone on Instagram. And then I, I felt deep in my heart that this is where I belong. So that's how I joined. So, yeah. so amazing. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Praise God. I'm super <laughs> glad that you're here. <laughs> I'm so glad too. Okay. Anybody Thank you. else? So worship song and prayer and uh, word of God and this is all the part of part of worship, not uh, worship. So uh, uh, but uh, Worship song is uh, very important and verse of God is also very important in our life because uh, when uh, uh, we are singing the worship song and in that time giving thanks to the Lord with the joy, that, uh, that is important because the uh, uh, Havel, Havel uh, the son of uh, um, Adam, he gave uh, this uh, Offering with the wife, joyful. Eh? Oh, okay, Avdesh. Yeah, thanks. Um, right, I just, uh, I see one more person. Uh, Divya, here, yeah, go for it. Yeah, thank you, Pastor, for uh, the opportunity. Yeah, uh, I, f I feel uh, worship really changes our perspective, but because for me, there are there had been seasons in my life where I couldn't even, you know, for days I couldn't pray or read Bible because I was I would be so dry. Even if I open the Bible, it doesn't, you know, speak to me or make any sense for me. But um, worship uh, just changes that. Uh, my dry seasons are turned, and uh, then I'm feeling negative. Uh, that is turned over and there was uh, a particularly one time where it was really bad for me so the first words that comes out of uh, me uh, came out of me was god is good uh, which i was not able to say for a long time mm -hmm. so remembering god's uh, goodness faithfulness really you know gives uh, makes us uh, you know, recalibrate us to god so yeah 
I from yeah, worship is really important. I feel. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Tevya. Thanks for sharing. Um, Abu Bakr, please go ahead. I see you raised your hand. I only use worship to quicken my spirit. Mm. Anytime I weak. Oh, I really, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading the Bible. The moment I enter worship, start worshiping God, I will see, I will discover that my, my spirit will be cooking and I will be alive. So, and all the, the, the powers of the flesh will, will be, will be reduced and I will be, I will be more spiritual and going to do another levels of spiritual realm. So I see uh, worship as a as an instrument to quicken my spirit because I normally see God anytime I I worship God. And I normally uh, experience supernatural power so from heaven. So I see it as a tooth for my life. So that is awesome. Hey, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Abu, uh, Abu Bakr. Um, all right, thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody, for you know just sharing. And uh, again, because of time, you might have to just uh, continue. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this one of the reasons. And I, and if I were to uh, just think about one of those moments uh, in my life uh, is when I was eighteen and I failed in my uh, twelfth uh, in mathematics. Uh, yeah, whose favorite subject is mathematics? Definitely not mine. <laughs> But so I remember those that you know those days uh, when I was eighteen, and I, and I got the news that I failed in mathematics, and that season, uh, like the next two months, uh, th- I mean, for a long time, um, I mean, all I did and all I knew to do, um, all I knew how to react or respond, whatever was to uh, worship, like I would. Uh, went my anger in worship my disappointment uh, in worship uh, you know um, and you see that david doing that in psalms as well right um, and and so the thing that moment has had a huge impact in my life uh, and one of the reasons why i'm i'm so passionate about worship is is um, at that those days i did not know what else to do <laughs> uh, like I seriously did not have any, any other option. I didn't know what to do, and uh, all all I could do was worship. And um, and ever since, um, has it's, it's uh, I've been uh, been very passionate about it. Uh, you know, it's um, I don't need to have a reason, uh, etc., to just go into that zone and that mode of worship. Okay, so yeah, I mean, worship is powerful, like you all explained and like we've all experienced, you know, and we say we use worship to quicken our spirits and whatnot, um, you know, for breakthroughs, we, um, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? So I think we all agree that worship is important, but now we, uh, let's go into this chapter saying, okay, uh, what are the few definitions that's out there, uh, you know, regarding worship? Okay, uh, adding to the list of definitions that you've already provided. Okay, so here we go, page uh, one. I'm uh, sorry, page two. So, the dictionary defines worship as the act of expressing love, adoration, respect, and honor for someone or something. Okay, do you all see the words that you all used? It's already there in the notes. Okay. <laughs> um, it's the act, okay? Act, action. Uh, it's it's a it's a verb, okay? Uh, you're doing it. so. The dictionary defines worship as an action, act of expressing love, um, adoration, respect, and honor for someone or something. That means a thing can also be worshipped. A thing, okay? A th- a thing can re- can you know can receive all my adoration, affection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay, um, and it derives its meaning from worship. That's an Anglo-Saxon word. Uh, we get the word worship from that Anglo-Saxon word called worship, uh, which means esteeming something very highly. Okay, which we, you give it your highest regards to that someone or something. You have your utmost respect, utmost honor uh, to that person or, or, or a thing, 
Okay. Um, so as humans, we are all designed to worship, whether we realize it or not. We are all designed to worship, okay? To, to be totally in awe of something or someone. Uh, we as human beings, we love to worship. I mean, we are constantly looking for someone or something that is above us to just give all our worship. It doesn't matter who it is, right? Um, and if we see that in Genesis 3, you know, you eat this fruit, Eve, and you will be like God. And it's okay, you know, and then now we start creating gods for ourselves uh, of our own in, in you know, uh, whatever. You could think of so many other things. And uh, for example, superheroes. One of, that's one of the reasons why I asked, you know, what superpower we would have. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, in, in the comics, uh, they call Superman a god. Isn't it? He has godlike powers, uh, and immediately all the response is like, okay, well, it's, you know, the, the response is to worship. Um, so, as human beings, like it or not, we, we realize it or not, we are all designed to worship. It is in our DNA. We just have to figure out that our worship has to go to Jesus. That's it. It has to be channeled properly. Um, Right. Um, so as human beings, once again, we are all designed to worship, whether we realize it or not. OK, so everybody worships, not just the religious ones. Um, everybody worships something or someone um, like I shared. OK, but the object of worship differs. Right. Do you all agree with that? OK. Everybody worships something or someone, but the object of worship differs, isn't it? Um, I mean, especially for us people from India, we see, you know, we have the capacity to worship stones and trees and rivers, the sun, the moon, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Um, but the object of our worship differs. Um, for some, the object of worship could be creation itself. Uh, for others, it could be money or power or position and ideology, and the list goes on. So um, that point, the point there is that everybody worships something or someone, but the object differs. Why? Because we are all designed. We were all made to worship. It's in our DNA. Okay. So, um, so that's that. Um, now, coming into the context of the church. The church talks about worship and spends time and effort in worship. Uh, you know, we, before the sermon comes in, there is a worship team that leads us into a time of worship and whatnot. Okay, so a simple question. Uh, and again, it's not a tricky question. Um, is worship the time spent in singing? That's question one. Let's answer that first. So is worship the, spe is worship the time spent in singing? Not only. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, so my question again is uh, why not? Because singing okay, so is a singing and playing. Singing. An... Yes, yes. So singing uh, and playing an instrument dancing is all is all an aspect of worship but it is not the only right we can't put it in a box and say only singing is worship everything else doesn't matter how you live your life no okay so um and then uh worship is it a genre of music not really that's okay so we have all these definitions of music right but um and as we just dig a little bit more deeper right this is what we've made, uh, you know, of worship, at least in, in, in this day and age. Uh, it's, it's a little bit like uh, Galileo's discovery, okay? Uh, just journey with me, okay? In the, in the early 16th century, in, in the beautiful midnight clear sky, uh, you know, Italian sky, um, this uh, little known, not very famous person called Galileo, he builds this device 
polishes his glass or really nicely and builds this device that helps him see the planets a little closer. So at that point in time, the humanity believes that they are the constant, everything else revolves around them, right? Every other planet, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything revolves around them. And then Galileo makes this discovery and suddenly everybody's offended. We are not the center of the universe? What does this mean? You know, uh, the truth hurt them really bad. You know, I mean, just think about it. Everything had to change. The textbooks that was printed had to change. The education system, you know, everything. The libraries that was filled with books that said, we are the constant, everything revolves around us, had to be changed. The ideologies, the, the calendars had to be changed. Uh, everything, uh, simply because they thought they are the center. And it's very similar when it comes to the worship universe, if I may say that, right? Uh, in the worship universe, we think, okay, I am the recipient. Your worship comes to me. It's important how I feel. Yeah. Uh, so, so does any of these statements, uh, you know, sound familiar to you? Okay. It's again in the notes page too. Okay. Does any of these comments sound familiar? Uh, it says, by the third song, I was really worshiping. Okay. Uh, who or what were you worshipping before the third song? <laughs> and uh, the next one says, worship gets me to the place uh, where I don't have to think about anything. Yes, trance. Uh, but worshipping God actually requires thinking, isn't it? Uh, uh, you know, the word is very clear in saying, okay, you have to worship with your mind as well. Uh, will there be worship at the meeting? Uh, the question is who or what? Okay, uh, and the, here's another famous comment that I've heard so many times. With only 20 minutes, we really didn't have time to worship. As though we warm up, okay. Uh, let's, let's look at the other, uh, you know, the next comment. Fred is doing a worship this morning. That means everybody is going to be excited and everybody is going to sing along. Is it only me or is uh, have you all have at least some of you all heard some of these comments? <laughs> okay, interesting. Okay, let's just keep going. Okay, I really love your worship. Now this person means well. Uh, you know, this is a comment. Uh, I mean, some of the worship leaders get, you know, uh, after leading worship and whatnot. I, and we understand what they say, but then uh, one of the ways that we can beautifully respond to that is we say, thank you, praise God. I hope you worship too. We immediately, you know, change the focus uh, back to God. Um, Susie is a real worshiper. That means Alice is not. Why is Susie re is a real worshiper? Oh, she's so expressive. She lifts her hands. She spreads her hands wide. wide and she's swinging left and right and spinning. It's like, wow, Susie is such a beautiful worshiper. Whereas um, Aradhana just sits and, you know, she doesn't do anything really, you know. Um, um, so these are the ways that we... We've, we've defined worship as, you know, in our worship universe, we, uh, we think we are the recipients, um, you know, are, are you guys with me? Are you you're able to get what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, bro. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, yes, sir. But it's, it's, it's so important for us to uh, just come to that realization immediately, uh, that realization that we are not the center of the worship universe. Uh, Jesus is. Uh, he is the center of uh, our worshiping universe. Okay, We are not the recipient of our, our worship. Jesus is the center of our worship. So when that focus changes, we will stop judging or, you know, commenting. It's like, uh, you know, hmm. You know, you know, I didn't really feel, you know, uh, I didn't feel a single feather of an angel today, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay, so the point one is that Jesus is the recipient of our worship. It's not us. 
cool. I think we can make peace with that, right? Um, and let's move on. I've put together more definitions uh, on worship for us to just because it's fun and, and, and we'll see, um, you know, what people have said. Um, defining worship, one of the first quotes out there is uh, by Dutch humanist Desiderius Erasmus. I put that in there simply because I like the name. <laughs> Desiderius Erasmus, it's, it's it's amazing, it's scary all at the same time, it's so cool. And <laughs> so he all he says is this, every definition is dangerous. And I agree with that, you know, every definition is dangerous. An explanation is, that may explain why when we try to define a word simply and precisely, we often end up missing significant aspects of the word we are defining. Attempts at explaining worship as love or intimacy or relationship say something true, but end up leaving out more than they contribute to our understanding of worship. That's, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's one. Uh, let's look at this next one. This is from the book, uh, Music Through the Eyes of Faith by Harold Best. Um, and he says, Acknowledging that someone or something else is greater, worth more, and by consequence to be obeyed, feared, and adored. Okay, I love those words. Okay, acknowledging that someone or something else is greater, um, worth so much more, and by consequence to be obeyed, feared, adored. And worship is the sign that in giving myself completely to someone or something, I want to be mastered by it. Wow. That, that, that's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Worship is the sign that in giving myself completely, 100%, not 99.99, giving myself completely, I'm consumed by my affections for that person or that thing. I'm absolutely consumed and obsessed. And then in that, you say, I want to be mastered by that thing or that someone. Is it speaking? Is it saying something to some of us? It sure is saying something to me. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, the third definition. Um, by, this is by Warren Wiersbe. I'm sure some of us know it's from his book, uh, Real Worship. He says, worship is the believer's response of all that they are, mind, emotions, will, body, to what God is and says and does. Okay, can I read that again? Worship is the believer's response of all that they are, which is mind, emotions, will, body, to what God is and says and does. That's his definition of worship. Um, and David Peterson in his uh, another book, uh, Engaging with God, and uh, he says, worship of the living and true God is essentially an engagement okay, with him on the terms that he proposes. Let's just pause there, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you to repeat a few words, but you'll have to repeat it with your mic's mute, okay? So don't unmute your mic and say this, okay? Uh, and I'm just going to believe by faith, uh, saying that, okay, everybody is saying, saying those words, okay? So here's the thing. What I want you to say is, um, worship of the living and the true God is essentially an engagement. Everybody say engagement with your mic's muted. Okay, it's an engagement. Okay, you get your, you are engaging with that person, with that with, with God. You are conversing. You you are not just turning a blind eye or, or a deaf ear. You are getting in in that conversation, isn't it? With with him on the terms that he proposes and in the way that he alone makes it possible. Okay, I, I love that. Um Let's go to the next one, next definition. Worship 
is the activity of the new life of a believer in which recognizing the fullness of the Godhead as it is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ and his mighty redemptive acts. He seeks by the power of the Holy Spirit to render to the giving God the glory, honor, and submission which are his due. That's from the book, Oh Come Let Us Worship by Robert Rayburn. Okay. Um, right. Are you guys loving these quotes? I am. I am. I am. Um, it's it's been these quotes have and I've read this so many times. Okay, I've I, I've read these quotes at least since two thousand eleven, and every time I read these, you know, it's like, okay, where did these guys get this revelation? You know how, etc. Yeah, um, but let's move on. Um, this is the last one um, by Bob Coughlin. Um, he says, Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people to his self-revelation that exalts God's glory in Christ in our minds, affection, and wills in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I want to read that one more time. Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people to his self-revelation that exalts God's glory in Christ in our minds, affections, and wills in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this quote and we're going to break it down and see, okay, what he really means by that, okay? What is Christian worship? And I've broken it down uh, so that we'll go through it, uh, you know, little by little. Okay, um, but because that's going to take time, um, and I will, I'll pause now, and we'll take a break, and uh, we'll resume. Okay, once we're after the break, um, we're getting extra five minutes grace because I'm a very nice teacher that way. <laughs> okay, so go for, go on for your break, and I'll see you all in fifteen minutes. We'll be back. All right, see you guys. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.